So a photo book that I think has had a big influence on me is Anthony Hernandez's um, book. Now, I'm not going to remember the title because it's a long title, but it's something like sitting, standing, waiting, uh, fishing, and something else. And it's, I think it was uh, published maybe in the 90s, 1990s. Uh, and it's the images in that book where he's using a five, seven inch camera. So bigger than a five, four or 10, 12 centimeter, bigger. Uh, and he's photographed um, at some at bus stops in LA. But in a, in a way, it shows showed me the kind of possibilities that you see in American parades where the camera, his is on a big tripod, but because it's it's just standing there, people ignore it. And he, he, he kind of, so it has that very observational look, but the landscape within the work is, again, really crucial. So that's, that, that book is, I think, is, uh, I would say is maybe the work that's influencing American parades in, in one sense. There's another book by a Greek photographer called Le Leonardo Pasta, who's a, whose work was beginning the 20th century, uh, called uh, Castori at the time of the Macedonian struggle. So this, this photographer died very young, uh, maybe 30-ish, uh, but he worked from 1895 to something like 1910, I think. And uh, he was, uh, I suppose, the studio photographer of this town in Greece. And he, he made these extraordinary portraits, but not just portraits. He, he photographed the soldiers, the fighters. He photographed all the different ethnic communities and not in the studio, outside. And he would even put backdrops up behind people. But the, the images that are really influenced and, and were the group portraits. He had these community portraits of whole crowds of people, but all looking at the at the camera. And you have this uh, tradition in America as well, where especially in the 50s, 40s, 50s, 60s, of these panoramics of uh, big group meetings. So it could be uh, an indoor image in a convention center, but it could be the insurance brokers of Ohio. And you'd have all these people sitting at different tables and you could see all the faces. And so one of my thoughts, and which relates to American parades with this type of imagery, was what would a group portrait look like today? Because in, in a way, American parades is uh, a group portraits throughout the, throughout the work. And so this is kind of my contemporary take on the group portraits. Instead of me sort of saying, look at the birdie <laughs> or whatever, I've just, you know, the crowd is just there. And I, I've just created that formal structure for the group portrait. For, for uh, uh, fact or fiction books, this is kind of really hard because there's so many over the years. And I, but I've kind of I, I I probably go back to maybe when I was studying sociology at school at 16, and I was reading. Uh, I think they changed my whole way of looking at the world. I think they're quite a revelation for me. Was uh, there was a, a number of uh, textbooks, you know, sociological books, and and one was. Uh, family and kinship in East London. Um, and it was kind of, uh, but there were, there were kind of a number of different books looking at the education system and so on. Uh, and I think those books played a really big role in uh, how I, I kind of changed and developed my, uh, my thinking. So although there were a number of, you know, just after those years, especially in my late teens, early twenties, you know, I read a lot of, a no lot of novels, you know, all the classics like Dostoevsky and everybody, actually. Uh, I kind of feel that maybe that influence, that because I think my, you know, I've always been in, had that interest in, in having an element of politics in my in my work, and I think it probably stems from from that time. And so I was thinking about, again, films, this TV series, there's just so many, and I, I used to watch a lot of films at, at that time, uh, a huge, especially when uh, video first started. Uh, I knew a man who could get every film you can imagine that was a bootleg 
evidently Phil. Uh, this is before they were available in, in, in the cinema. But for, maybe for the same reasons, I kind of think of something more, not quite as modern, but, uh, but The Wire uh, TV series. I think The Wire was... Uh, I like the fact that there's multi-stories going on. And I like the, and, and the, the movement of the camera within, within that. Um, yeah, and also the way each series dealt with one specific issue. And it was a, a, a really interesting uh, interplay between the politics of Baltimore and local people and crime. Uh, and that interrelationship was uh, is really kind of fascinating. So that layer of stories, uh, you know, so they'll spend that one series would be kind of roughly, the politics of it would be based around the corruption of the educational system, but also playing as the drug stories and, and so on, the, the, the cop stories. Uh, so I think I'd kind of, yeah, I'd say something like The Wire. And then music is like, uh, I mean, every period is kind of marked by different music. So I was, I was really into music. Uh, uh, and from around the age of 13, 14, I was seeing bands maybe two, three times a week in London. Uh, and then I, I grew up the whole punk era uh, with the Pistols and the Clash. And I, I used to go and see those bands in very small venues and pubs mostly before at the beginning. So punk had a really big influence, but I think if I think of music I, I listen to continuously, I think maybe the person I've listened to the longest is Lou Reed. Uh, throughout, from that time to today, I can always listen to Lou Reed. And then I would say Nick Drake, but my kind of real choice will be uh, Leonard Cohen. I can never tire of listening to uh, uh, Leonard Cohen. And what I like about Leonard Cohen is uh, you can speak his lyrics. You don't need to sing them. And he, he often speaks his lyrics in concert. And you can cover his songs. You know, so there's often fantastic uh, cover versions of his, of his music as well. So you have Leonard Cohen singing his own songs. You have Leonard Cohen speaking his own songs and you can have great covers. And I mean, that's kind of like, he has every bass you can imagine of a great uh, musician. Uh, so yeah, I think Leonard Cohen is, is, is my final pick. 